Hi, it's Katrina. Number 10. The Chronicles of Georgia The Georgian Chronicle is a fantastic superstructure built from massive stone pillars in the country of Georgia. It looks like something you might see in a fantasy movie, a Stonehenge full of history. These huge greenish-colored pillars erected at the very edge of a mountain overlook the blue sea beyond. While it looks very ancient, the building was made as recently as 1980 by the famous sculptor Zurab Saratelli. Even though the monument is so new, it is still rich in Georgian history. Every one of the pillars is depicted with scenes from historical and religious events. Some of these structures are covered in images of Jesus Christ, others with Georgian poets, and some with the most famous people who ever came out of Georgia, such as kings and authors. In total, there are 16 giant pillars, all of them forming a perfectly symmetrical square open-air temple. Unfortunately, the Georgian Chronicle was never finished. Zura began work in 1985. But with the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, funds ran out, things changed very quickly, and the artist never got to finish his masterpiece. Number 9. The Chichen Itza Observatories El Caracol at Chichen Itza, when you see it from the right angle, definitely looks like a domed observatory. The top of the structure is broken, but it still looks like there should be a telescope sticking out from the roof and a Maya scientist sitting in there studying the stars. While that's obviously not the case, there is archaeological evidence in this ancient Maya city that El Caracol was used as an observatory. The structure was built around the year 906 as a way for the Maya to observe the sky. One of the issues with living in the Yucatan Peninsula 1,000 years ago was that you didn't exactly have the best view of the heavens. The brush was so thick, the jungle so lush, and the vegetation so tall that the canopy almost always blocked out the night sky. So, in the city of Chichen Itza, they built an observatory on a tall platform that allowed for people to get a full glimpse of the stars high above the trees. The main purpose of this observatory actually seems to be observing the planet Venus. Nobody exactly knows why, but the Maya were obsessed with this planet. They wrote down that it appeared in the west and then vanished in the east, depending on the time of the year, and they knew it took 584 days to cycle around the sun. They also investigated at least 29 other other astronomical events at this particular observatory. Archaeologists know this because of the sight lines found inside the structure, which directed the eye toward where the astronomical event was to take place. For example, the summer and winter solstices. Number 8. The Untouched Irish Tomb A farmer in Ireland was working in his field as usual when he found something amazing. Even though he'd covered this place many times before, this time he discovered the entrance to an ancient tomb that had been untouched for four thousand years. This unbelievable discovery was made on the southern part of the Dingle Peninsula. The farmer had actually been using an excavator to lift up a big rock that was in his way when it revealed a hidden chamber. The rock was actually the capstone to the tomb, and inside was a set of human bones. Archaeologists have dated the tomb back to the Bronze Age, saying it could be anywhere between 2,500 and 4,000 years old. It's a little different from other Bronze Age tombs because the entire thing was built underground. This suggests it could be even older. Michael O'Colleen, a local archaeologist, said it's an incredibly rare discovery because nobody had touched it. It could prove invaluable in the coming months to help reveal more about the prehistoric burial rituals of Ireland. People have been living on the Dingle Peninsula for at least 6,000 years, but this is definitely one of the more advanced tombs from prehistoric days that's ever been found. It would have taken a significant amount of work, suggesting whoever was buried here had been a very important person. Other amazing archaeological sites in the region include burial grounds and beehive-shaped huts built by the ancient Celts. Number 7. The Kutub Minaret The Kutub Minar or Minaret is an ancient tower from the 12th century that can be found in Delhi, India. It stands over 240 feet tall and looms over the entire surrounding area. It's one of the most iconic monuments in the capital that most people have never even heard of. Most historians agree it was built as part of a celebration of victory, and had probably been inspired by similar minarets or tall towers in Afghanistan. It was the first Sultan of Delhi, Qutbuddin Aybak, who ordered the monument to be built in 1192. This was after he defeated the ruling Hindus 
and took control of India for himself. The tower wasn't finished all at once. First came the base of the sandstone pillar, and then over the course of three more rulers, the monument was expanded. It continued to be built upward and renovated until it stood five stories tall. It takes 379 steps to reach the very top of the tower, something nobody with a fear of heights should even try to attempt. The tower has survived quite a lot over the past 800 years. It's been struck by lightning at least twice, and the cupola at the top fell over when it got hit hit by an earthquake. In fact, the tower survived two major earthquakes with minimal damage. Besides the tower, there's the fortified complex which houses it, and this place has a controversial history. Hundreds of years ago, 27 Hindu temples were destroyed, and the debris from the temples was used to construct the very first mosque Delhi ever saw. This was all part of the exchange when the Sultan took over and tried to force a religious change across the country. There's also a 20-foot-high pillar here made of solid iron that survived 1,600 years. Among the arches there is probably the tomb of a sultan hidden somewhere beneath the pillar. Number 6. Iraqi Demon Cave Archaeologists in Iraq recently discovered a creepy demon cave. They didn't find any actual demons inside, but researchers did come across an ancient clay tablet from 2,700 years ago. On the clay tablet is a horn figure depicted as half human and half goat, basically your typical everyday demon. But to the ancient Assyrians, this demon's name was Bennu. Like the character Satan that came later, he had hoofed feet, a forked tail, and a snake's tongue poking out from his mouth. Even stranger is the fact that the Assyrians believed it was Bennu who was responsible for a very specific medical condition. Back then, any ailment of the mind or body that wasn't sustained in the physical world attributed this to a demon. If someone was blind, if they got sick, or if they were epileptic, it was all blamed on a demon and Bennu was believed to be the cause of epileptic fits. On the clay tablet, there's even a description of symptoms associated with someone who's been afflicted by the goat demon. Seizures, loss of sanity, and crying out. And now for number five. But first, it's shout out time. Big thank you to Leslie, aka Ivory Princess, and Joseph Thomas for supporting this channel. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to join the Origins Explained family. Number five, Secret Christian Town. The ancient city of Marea was a bustling port town located on the northern coast of Egypt during the Roman era. This was long after the days of the pharaohs, when Egypt belonged to the mighty Roman Empire. Marea was likely founded during the conquest of Alexander the Great in 332 BC, but it wasn't for 300 years that it would become a prosperous port city under Roman rule. Just recently, archaeologists came across a mysterious hub built in the city sometime in the 6th century by Christian pilgrims. A Christian hub being built in the 6th century during the the Islamic conquest came as quite a shock to archaeologists. After the Romans were gone, the Muslims conquered Egypt between 639 and 646. During this time, they didn't build any additional towns and cities. They did enough slaughtering and there were enough towns built by the Romans and Macedonians that construction was useless. They definitely wouldn't have built any Christian cities. In any case, somebody built a tiny Christian town inside the ruins of a large Roman farmstead. Archaeologists figure this was probably a stop on the way for European Christians to visit the tomb of the martyr Saint Menas of Egypt. They would have crossed the Mediterranean to Alexandria, taken a boat about 30 miles to Marea, and then spent the night there. Number 4. Kai Din Tomb The Kai Din Tomb is where the body of the 12th emperor of the Nguyen dynasty is buried. He was the very last king of Vietnam to build a mausoleum for himself. And even though this great and imposing tomb looks like a dark temple from a bygone age, it was in fact built in the 1920s. Kai Din died before it could ever be completed, and his son, Emperor Bao Dai, finished it for him. Kai Din ruled Vietnam at a time when the world was changing. World War I had just finished, World War II wasn't yet on the horizon, and the world was quickly modernizing. Nonetheless, he continued to build all kinds of impressive traditional structures in central Vietnam, mostly around the Hue Imperial Citadel. His tomb, for example, is unlike any other tomb in Southeast Asia. The gates are decorated with clouds and dragons. The stonework is all black and charcoal colored, giving the place a dark and mysterious atmosphere. And the old king's body is housed at the very top of the structure after climbing 126 stairs to
to reach the burial chamber. Number three, the Viking Beer Hall. In Northern Scotland, archeologists have made a fantastic discovery on the island of Rousse. They dug up the crumbled foundation of an ancient Viking beer hall. Evidence shows the hall was open from the 10th to the 12th centuries, over 200 years. But what makes it a little more interesting than other beer halls is that it probably served only the most respected of the Vikings. It was for elite members of society only, a real fancy club that not just anyone could show up to. He had to be on the list, otherwise you could go drink with the rest of the peasants. There's not much left of this elite beer hall these days. Fragmented pieces of pottery, old chunks of Norse trash, and the busted stones of what had once been walls. But at one time, this thing had been huge. It was 43 feet long, with stone benches positioned along the walls on either side of the building. This was a place specifically for drinking ale and getting rowdy. The beer hall was discovered at the archaeological site of the Scale Farmstead, a Viking settlement that had likely been inhabited for at least 1,000 years. It was archaeologists with the University of the High Islands and islands who have been digging here for years, sifting through ancient trash heaps and poking holes in the ground in search of discoveries just like this one. Number 2. Ancient Roman Worship Complex Just this year, French archaeologists discovered the remains of an ancient worship complex in Brittany, dated 2,100 years old. The complex was built following the Roman conquest of the lands of Gaul in the 1st century BC, after the Romans beat down the tribes that had been wandering across France. Years later, the Gauls, now integrated into Roman society, went to the top of a hill with beautiful views of the Flume Valley below and built two massive temples. Archaeologists believe one of them was dedicated to Mars and Jupiter. Mars was the god of war and Jupiter was the king of the gods. The second temple is a little more mysterious since archaeologists can't tell exactly who was worshipped in it. The complex was used at least until around the beginning of the end of the Roman Empire in the 4th century AD. It would have gone out of style just around the time that Christianity was spreading outside the capital and into places like France. The construction of the temple shows how the local population integrated with the Roman religion after they were subjugated. Even the rebellious Gaulish Rhydones tribe, who lived in Brittany since prehistoric times, quickly adopted the Roman religion when they didn't have a choice. Number 1. The Ajanta Caves The Ajanta Caves are hidden in the hills of northwestern India, 200 miles from the wild city streets of Mumbai. They were carved into the face of a mountain starting around 2,200 years ago. They were discovered totally by chance in 1890 by British soldiers who were hunting in the area. Ever since, the caves have been a major source of pride for India and one of the greatest places to see ancient Indian art and architecture. Construction here went on up until around 650 AD, or for at least 800 consecutive years. The result is that there are over 30 massive caves that have been chiseled into the solid rock face of the cliffs by hand, each one dedicated to the life of the Buddha. Every one of these is filled with massive sculptures, murals carved into the walls, painted ceilings like at the Sistine Chapel, and monuments you'd never think possible to carve inside it. These days, the Ajanta Caves is one of the most popular architectural sites in all of India. There is really nowhere else in the country that compares to the sheer scope of what went on here. It's basically an underground city, which took 800 years of manpower and ingenuity to create. Even more impressive is the fact that it was created entirely by monks, who then lived in absolute seclusion inside the temples and chambers they carved with their own hands. Thanks for watching! Which of these fascinating historical sites would you love to visit? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye.